Welcome back, you're with us here on Aspire. Now in the art world, Sotheby's is one of the most sought after auction houses. And the chairman of Sotheby's International, Robin Woodhead, he was in town recently. Yes, he was here to talk about the Amaya collection. Now this collection is on display. It is something that uh, Amrita Javeri, this private collector, has really spent years on. It's got some of the best modern art masters. If you talk about Hussein, Tayyip Meza, you talk about S.H. Raza, it's all there in that collection. It goes under the hammer on the 19th of March in New York. And Mr. Woodhead tells us where Indian art stands in the international context. Listen it. A preview of 43 outstanding works of art. The Amaya Collection, all owned by a single art collector, is up for sale by Sotheby's in New York this time on the 19th of March this year. It's the second such auction of its kind. It also marks Sotheby's first evening preview of the collection in New Delhi. The collection features the most sought-after paintings in the world of art. F.H. Raza, F.M. Souza, also M.F. Hussain. When these works of art go under the hammer in New York, together they are expected to fetch somewhere in the region of 7 million US dollars, that 38 crore rupees. It's amazing to think that all of these come from one single collector, Amrita Javeri. Uh, the highlights of the works that are coming up for sale um, are really some of the very early modern pieces that are now quite hard to find and also works by the contemporary generation of artists made in the 1990s and early 2000s when things were changing quite rapidly um, in India. This auction really provides is a chance for um, a collector to really have really strongly provenanced works um, that, that uh, of course in going forward in the future this, this is certainly a, a strong um, issue that will be more and more prevalent in the field of Indian art. Robin, it's good to see you in India. Thank as you. As far as uh, the setup is concerned, you know what they say about auctions, and I'm given this to understand, they say you'll never get a good price. If you're bidding, you'll never get a good price. You will be driven by passion. You will want that piece of art because you're driven by it something about it appeals to you and you want it and you never get the best price. Would you agree? No, the best price is the price you get it at. <laughs> and the um, auction process has been going on for 3,000 years and it's one of the best ways to buy a work of art. True. But in your opinion, when investments are something that are riding so high, we've just been through this economic slowdown. Obviously, the economies of it, when you're buying a piece of art, are going to come to play. So, when that is the consideration, when you're uh, dealing with hedge fund managers and private equity players, they think differently. Most well, certainly, but the art market is made up of lots of constituent parts. You've got people who are passionate collectors, people who are buying it because they want to show that they're wealthy and they've got status. You've got people who are certainly buying it for investment purposes. And you've got people who are buying it because they want to own it. You're a passionate collector. So, these are the different elements that make up the market. No one one element applies and that's what we see on a daily basis in our auction rooms around the world. You know Robin it's interesting because uh, India saw this sudden boom and a lot of people refer to it as the bubble really in 2008 we had a couple of art funds come in as well which went down like a like a ton of bricks really uh, and at the same time globally we saw a spurt on the in the wake of what was happening globally by way of the economic slowdown. Uh, suddenly our sales went up. So it's almost, uh, you know, in contrast to what we've seen globally. Can, that, can you put that in perspective for us? Yes, certainly. I think there are two completely different features were operating here. Um, the Indian art market was undoubtedly much more um, speculative um, than many other markets. The, there were a lot of speculators um, operating in the Indian market up to 2008. And you saw that in some of the price movements and, and the way artist prices went up very quickly um, and then suddenly came back. The international art market, on the other hand, um, began to attract a greater number of participants than it had ever had before. And this is a phenomenon that we were not anticipating. Um, after 2008, the whole 
global art market paused because everybody was trying to work out what the price of art was, indeed what was the price of anything in a world that seemed to be collapsing every day. But quite quickly, um, prices reasserted themselves. And what we saw as a pattern around the world was that there was a growing number of people, a small number of people, but a growing number of them in many different cultures who were interested in acquiring works of art which represented the high points of those civilizations and those categories. And so that's one of the reasons why the prices of art went up all over the world. Within Amaya, Robin, in the kind of artwork that you're seeing this time, what strikes you the most? Because we're surrounded by some of that art as well, so perhaps you have your favourite. A great characteristic of this collection is not that any one picture is greater than every other picture, but is the assembly together. Um, it gathers together works of art which reference way beyond India. And I think that's really important because it puts into context the Indian painting um, history in recent years. Well, that is a beautiful collection. It's worth a look and uh, it heads next to London. Absolutely. A five million dollar. That's what they are hoping to get, at least at the base. But that's about all. We could back into this edition of Aspar. Thanks indeed for joining us. Goodbye.